Hi there, welcome to my channel where I take you on tours of creative spaces, whether they be tiny, nomadic, or altogether unique, and showcase stories of homeowners that are living alternatively. In today's video, we're gonna meet a woman who's been living on the road for six years in a nomadic tiny home. Her adventurous lifestyle is so inspiring, and I think you're gonna find her modified Overlander camper, well, it's actually more like a glamper, to not only be extremely functional, but also super cute inside. If you like videos like this one where we showcase stories of people living alternatively, make sure that you subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you know every single time we publish a new video. Hey guys, I'm Lindsay, Girl Gone Glamping, and today I'm gonna to tell you all about my Overland Explorer vehicle, X10 Flatbed Camper. Come on. I grew up kind of camping, just a farm kid. It's kind of been instilled in me since I was a little kid to just get out in nature a little bit more. So it's been about six and a half years that I've been traveling full time. Maybe six months into that journey, I quickly realized like, this is just a lifestyle for me. I started Googling poor man's earth roamer and that's how I actually found the build thread for this current rig that I'm in, which is Overland Explorer X10 flatbed camper. Being that this rig was a prototype, I made a lot of changes to it, added different windows, redid all the systems. So I have around 165, 170K all in with the truck, with the camper, with all the systems. A lot of people say that's a lot of money, and it is. I look at it as your mortgage or your rent, your vehicle, but also think of your year of your annual budget for traveling. Hotels, Airbnbs, rental cars, everywhere I've gone in this rig and essentially camped for free, over three and a half years has easily, easily paid off. All right, so this is a prototype of the Overland Explorer X10 flatbed camper. One of my favorite things about this is the actual camper comes off the flatbed. It typically has four camper jack legs mounted to it where those brackets are, and you just, it's an electric jack, you jack it up, drive the truck out from under it, I left those legs in my parents' barn just because they're very heavy and wind resistant. Get better gas mileage without it. The truck is a 2014 Dodge Ram 3500. It is a 6.4 Hemi. I am very happy with it being a gas engine, especially with today's diesel prices. I get about nine and a half miles to the gallon. If you want to live everywhere, it's kind of just par for the course. I stopped calculating my fuel mileage probably three years ago. So the truck is actually just the base tradesman. I added Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth. I have a security dash cam, and also I added a rear backup camera as well. My back seat is a disaster, but I'll show it to you guys. <laughs> it's basically kind of like a garage. I have a Tupperware bin with all my winter gear at the moment and compression bags smushed down, my ski boots, my bibs, everything ski related. The Ram is actually really nice. It has like little secret bins in the storage in the floor. I have shoes in there at the moment. <laughs> Too many shoes. But it is a really big back seat and the actual back seat does fold up and there's storage underneath it as well. The flatbed has these four boxes on here. And here I have my backup propane buddy heater. My camper furnace is diesel. Everything in the camper is diesel. I don't have any propane on board. This is the step that my dad engineered. Just kind of folds up nice and easily, which is pretty nice. Um, it doesn't interfere with the rear wheel and it's pretty sturdy to stand on. Being that this rig is 11 foot three inches tall, I didn't have anywhere to put my skis. I couldn't build up essentially, and I really didn't want to be climbing up this ladder every day in the winter to get all my gear up and down. So my dad fabricated a ski box. So this holds two pairs of skis, my poles and my snow brush for when I do actually have to climb up top and shovel off the solar panels. This box came fabricated from the manufacturer and it has a high lift jack in it, which I fortunately have never had to use. And then back here, you can see the condensers for my 12 volt Cruise and Comfort USA air conditioner, which is a lifesaver in the summertime. Even the ladder on this, it's very heavy duty. 
we can go up top and take a look at the solar panels. In the wintertime, I'm up and down this shoveling off the snow. And then it's nice because it just folds right back up. I have just under a thousand watts solar on the roof. I have three 330 watt panels, which charge up about a 420 amp hour battery bank. So in here, you'll see my S-Bar diesel furnace. I have a three gallon tank of diesel here. I do kind of wish I had a larger diesel tank for it because in the wintertime I'm burning close to a gallon a day. And the diesel again, it's for my domestic heat, on-demand hot water, and I have a diesel cooktop. This is where my gray water uh, outtake is. And then it just closes up nice and easily. I have my water fill here for a hose, easily accessible. And then to charge things up. I've only had to plug this camper in once in the three and a half years that I've been in it. I've made sure to label this gas only because people see a big truck and a lot of times they just assume diesel and sometimes in states like Oregon you can't pump your own gas so can never be too cautious. This is my five gallon cassette toilet. I go about four days before emptying it about when I'm in the camper full time. So it's about 40 pounds to lift from a pretty high point down. Just take it to a porta potty, a rest stop, it takes about 60 seconds to dump it. It's not a big deal. So now that you guys have seen all the exterior, come on in and I'll show you my home. This is my kitchen. Uh, I actually really like these countertops. They are stainless steel. They are indestructible, easy to clean. The guys who make this camper come from a sheet metal fabricating background. So this was kind of their touch on that. This is a diesel cooktop that doubles as a space heater. Again, the only fuel source I have in the camper is diesel. I added this microwave, which I use probably more than I should. I have this little Altera faucet addition that just kind of makes it spray out to help conserve water. There's also like a mist mode. And then a nice window here I can look out at while I'm doing dishes. So my cupboards are a complete disaster, but I will show you them. Here we go. I love this little thing for these cupboards. When I first bought the camper, I thought I broke it, but you just, it's a little spring-loaded action. It's great. All this stuff is easily wiped down. You know, you're out in nature. Nature comes inside your home inevitably. So it's really nice. You can just wipe all those down. Essentially, this is like a pantry. It's dry food storage. Everything kind of gets shoved in there and moves around a little bit while you're traveling, but these click down and they kind of keep the mess at least in one place. I'm 5'10 and the inside is probably 6'7, I think I measured it once. So a little over-engineered. This is where there was a skylight. There was one here and in the bathroom. I insulated those off because my whole roof is covered in solar panels. This was actually a bunk bed when I bought it. I don't have any kids, so I didn't need it. Took it out, added these wooden shelves for some extra storage, added this window, and then this actually comes up into a standing desk. I work full time from the road, so this is really nice. When you're sitting all day driving, you don't want to be sitting all day working. So this is great. And it also does fold down into a twin size bed. So this is your standard lagoon table. It swivels in all directions and you can manually lift it up and down about 12 inches. Or you can take it off. My dad fabricated this. Tighten it up. Tighten that up, and you have a standing desk. You can easily just take all the cushions off, they Velcro on. When you need to get to any of the important stuff. These are both the blower fans for my diesel furnace. This is my shower pump, it's called a gulper. But it's pretty easily accessible, which is nice. And again, it's internal, so a lot of this stuff is protected from freezing. This is my 12 volt Cruise and Comfort air conditioner. This was really the only place I had to mount it. I feel like a lot of other rigs have it mounted on the floor, but again, because the camper is so tall, it doesn't really get in the way. And then the cold air blows out here. And this map actually came with the camper. I think the previous owner put it there. I actually reference it quite a bit work-wise and just sitting in here talking with friends. There's a newer, younger generation of people doing van life and they're doing it really well. They're doing meetups, they're making apps. There's like essentially festivals. It looks very different than when I got on the road six and a half years ago. 
So if you are at all wondering if you can find community on the road, I promise you, you can. You just have to look for it. One of my musts was a shower and a toilet that I had to have. I don't mind the wet bath setup at all. I have this little curtain here that you pull to take a shower so this part doesn't get wet. You pull it around two sides of you. There's tons of head space in here so you're not like crouched down trying to shower. I added this little shampoo container to clear up space from any bottles and stuff. A couple little towel racks and then more storage up here. These little bins here and a little uh, curtain rod. And then the toilet actually has water flow to it. So when you flush it, it flushes like a regular toilet. This is a 12 volt fridge. It's pretty spacious for just one person. There's a tiny little freezer section. And it's nice because things don't really move around too much while I'm driving. These were the cupboards that I assumed were all storage buying it sight unseen. This is actually where my 42 gallon freshwater tank is. It's nice because I can kind of get a visual of where my water level is at. I'm not relying on a sensor that can sometimes get clogged. I can just take a look at it and then it's inside again to help prevent it from freezing. And then I just store some other extra supplies in there. This cabinet is where all of my batteries are. So I have four 100 amp hour Lion Energy lithium batteries. And then I have a bunch of shoe boxes in front of them. So I only store things in here that are non-conductive. This is the motherboard, a switchboard basically. So I have a 2,500 watt inverter, I think. Don't quote me on that, 2,000 watt inverter. I could toggle this on and off for, to give myself house power, um, my water heater, shower pump, all this stuff. This is more shoe space or any kind of storage space. And then I have this little closet here with some mirrors, little Amazon lights for like essentially a vanity and then like jewelry makeup set up down here, toiletries. You can see it's not even really packed that full. And then so this is actually a queen short. I think it's 80 by 60 inches. It's, it's just a tiny bit shorter than a queen size mattress. I put queen size sheets on it. It's very cozy up here. Again, the, the head clearance is my favorite thing. Um, and then this skylight can also double as emergency exit. If there was ever a fire in the kitchen area and I couldn't get to the door, I could pop off under the roof, slide down the front of the camper. It's funny to think how living nomadically has changed me a little bit as a person and just my lifestyle in general. When I was living in New York City and Chicago, it was a lot of fun. I'm glad I did that in my younger 20s. Now that I'm in my later 30s, I want something different. I, I want to be fulfilled in other ways. And to me, that's bonding and camaraderie with other people that are like-minded, doing like-minded things, whether it's hiking or skiing, kayaking. I just went a completely different path. The highs and the lows, like all that builds character, all that has kind of made me into who I am now post six and a half years of doing this. I really don't know what the future holds for me. I can't picture a future in which I don't have a rig of some sort, even if it's part time. Thanks for watching this week's video. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you soon with another tiny or unique home tour.